we have arrived. I will not lie. This video is the video that I wanted to make from the beginning. And I was like, oh my God, I have to do like this full explanation of music theory before we can get to this point. So if you have arrived at the number system, know that you have arrived to the destination that I wanted you to get to. Um, what, in, I mean, this is something that I do all my music in. Anyone I work with, I always like this. Is, I'm like, do you know numbers? And if they know numbers, I'm like, you're hired. If they don't know numbers and I'm like, I still like you, we will work together and I will teach them how to do the numbers. So uh, numbers is like my form of communication in music, which is like uh, it's what they, the people that sometimes it's called Nashville numbers. Uh, but it, you see it in formal education, like people will communicate number wise uh, in relationship to what key they're in. So it's basically iterating on the diatonic chord sequence that we had. I'm just reading my notes here. And uh, it's designed for you to look at your music uh, from the space of like what is the numbered interval between each chord that you're playing in in your key. So we're going to go through the steps that I have written out here for you. So it, like if you're reading it, you can read it and then you can watch the video as you're reading it. So step one, know your diatonic chord sequence and watch the previous video if you don't know what I mean. Yes. If you're watching this video and you're on YouTube and you haven't discovered us before, welcome. Um, we This course is in our online music school, link in the description. But step one, understand what a diatonic chord sequence is. So that is the one major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, six minor, seven diminished that you guys should know very, very well. Now, step two, pick a key. Take a guess which one I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick a G, let's go, G. So we're starting on the third fret on the E string on our G note. And what's going to happen is I'm going to play my major scale. And then I'm going to be like, okay, cool. Diatonic chord sequence. It goes G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor. If you're following with open chords, G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor. Now, that's the diatonic chords. We, we went over that in the last video. Now, step number three is where we get fancy. You already know this. This is the beauty of it. You just number it. One, two minor, one, two minor, three minor, four, five, six minor. If I don't put a minor, it means it's major. So it's one major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, six minor. One, two minor, three minor, four, five, six minor. Now, you guys are wondering why. Why why on earth would we actually do this? Um, this is because numbers is what's going to allow you to connect many songs together because the chord relationships don't change. You know, I was saying diatonic chords are all the same. Like once the song's in the key, it's, going, it's only got like a certain amount of options. And then as soon as it deviates from that, it starts borrowing from other keys. And then that starts making the harmony more complicated. That means you have to be more clever. That means the song is, might not be as popular because as soon as you're doing more clever things, you are eliminating the audience. Um, like that's why when you listen to songs, they don't really have crazy chord progressions. Three chords in the truth is for a reason. You know, they don't want to be doing crazy chord changes because they want their lyrics to be simple. They want their lyrics to be heard. They want the melodies to be heard. So if you've got a guy who's doing like, you know, modal interchange and doing key changes and crazy things. Like, it's not nice. It's not nice. Even Taylor Swift, like, she's going to do a key change, but she's going to key change and it's going to be the exact same chord progression in a different key. And that is why the number system is super, super critical. And this is actually something I didn't write in here, but it is a fun thing that I can tell you, like, why it absolutely is handy. Now, what non-numbers communication looks like is this. I'm going to play Wagon Wheel. You are going to learn how to play Wagon Wheel today. Today, Wagon Wheel consists of an A chord, an E chord, an F sharp, and then a D chord. Fantastic. Now, I'm going to go play Chicken Fried. Oh, I'm going to play a G chord, a D chord, a C chord, and then a G, D, Oh, I want to play Whiskey Glasses by Morgan Wallen. Oh, okay, so it's an E chord, and then it's going to be a B chord, and then a C sharp, 
minor, and then an A. Great. I know how to play these songs. And some of you would be like, wow, that's really, like, that's all I need. And I'll be like, that's not what you need. What happens is, that's really handy because in your head you're like, okay, wagon wheels, uh, A, E, F, I've got the notes here, but if I go A, E, F sharp, D, okay, cool. Uh, now, chicken fry, okay, uh, G, C, D, um, no, G, D, C, G, D, okay, cool. And then uh, whiskey glasses, that's uh, E, a B, a C sharp minor, and then an A. For me, I've played those songs a million times, and it's really frustrating for me to think about the note letter names. Um, now what's going to happen is the numbers version of this communication, you can see how there's quite a lot. You have to remember a lot of different note names and letter names and where they are, but they're all the same chords. Are you ready? Numbers version, wagon wheel, key of A, we're just going to go one, five, six, four. So I got my key of A and I go one, five, six, four. I know one's a major, five is a major, six is a minor, and then four is a major. Boom. One, five, six minor, four. Wagon wheel, done. Uh, chicken fry, key of G, one, five, four, one, five. So one, five, four, one, five. So I just go. Boom. Crazy, right? Whiskey glasses. Oh, E, oh, it's a one, five, six minor, four. That's funny. I know another song that's a one, six, you know, one, one, five, six minor four. It's exactly the same progression as wagon wheel. Oh my God. All I have to do is change my progression and just go. So in the key of E, five, six. Wow, crazy business, right? Um, now I did a bunch of like bar chords and stuff, but I do have a capo right here and I'm gonna put this over here for you. So let's just go back to this. So we got wagon wheel in the key of A. I'm gonna grab a key of A and then I've got my capo on the second fret. So that means my G is going to be uh, over here as the one. So wagon wheel is one, five, uh, one, five, six minor, four. Now I go to chicken fry, which is just normally in the key of G. So take it off. So we got a one, five, four, one, five. Boom. Chicken fry. Uh, now this one's going to be annoying to do on the G because I'm going to have to come all the way up over here. But I'll still do it in the key of G just to keep it like the same. So it keeps same shape of G, but we're on the key of E because this is the root note is E. One, five, six minor. Now, if I wanted to, I could do a medley of these. Um, you know when I'm a chicken fry. One, one and nine. Four cheese that fit just right. And the radio world. Rock me, mama, like a wagon. Rock me, mama, any way you feel. Hey, yeah. Mama, rock me. And I'm gonna need some whiskey glasses. I'm gonna see the truth. Now on the couch right now with someone new but you see how it's all the same chords all the same progression and what the numbers is going to allow you to do is you're going to take the diatonic chords that you know and you're going to learn where they fit and where that relationship is now you're going to start seeing every song as the same you're going to be like it's just some version of these numbers being changed you're now not looking at every song as its own entity. You're starting to be like, what is a successful chord relationship? One, four, six, five, or one, five, six, four. You know, there's just so many songs. Uh, waiting on the world to change. One, six, four, one, five, six, four, one. And then people get ready. People get ready. Six, four, one. Uh, what is the other one? Um, sexual healing. Five, six, four, one. Um, you know, just, that's just how crazy this is. You're going to just start seeing the more you start analyzing songs you play and it's being like, what is the relationship in the numbers of this? That is the number system. Um, when I communicate my songs, that's how I do it. Um, 
I have a Word document of like heaps of songs and I can just like post it and you guys will have all the numbers there. You could literally learn like a hundred songs in, you obviously not going to learn them in five minutes, but you can have the information to play them in like two seconds. And because you know how the numbers work, you're going to be able to play them right away. So that is what the number system is. Um, you're basically playing diatonic chords, but you're stepping away from the letter names. You just pick the key you're in, set your key up. So the key of G, one, one major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, six minor. Boom, you're on fire. Um, that works in any key, you know, and the other craziest thing about this, so this is a thing that I didn't put on my notes, but say for instance, there's a key change and you're like, all right, we're going to do a key change. And so instead of playing like this is, an, I'll give you a direct example. I'm playing Taylor Swift. Um, Pull me your me. I've been feeling so long. I've been waiting. So, so it's a one five six minor in the key of A. Then and there he knelt to the ground and five two again. He goes to a B. Now, I could write it out as like, oh, okay, okay. Now instead of playing the A and telling all the letters, I'm like, okay, now we're going to a B and then you're going to an F sharp and then you're going to a G sharp minor and then you're going to an E. Where instead I can just be like, all right. It's a key change to B, and it's the same progression. One, five, six, four. All right, got it. That's all I really know. I take to your tack up, pick out a white dress. It's a love story, baby, just say yes. Boom. Uh, say you're jamming with a friend of yours, and this is the, like, being ignorant to understanding music theory is not like a, like, that you don't get pluses for not knowing you there's, there's nothing cool about knowing not knowing this kind of level of theory it's quite basic um it's complicated in that you have to apply it and you have to put in work and learn it but the the concepts behind it are actually very very simple it's just the chords that you're going to use i could be playing wagon wheel and someone comes in and they want to jam with us or like there's a vocalist and she's struggling she's like that's too high like no problem at all we're going to drop it to the key of f you tell the band Key of F, one, five, six, four. No problem, we got this. You know, that is how fast it goes. Oh, you wanna do it in the key of C? No problem, with key of C. All right, we're gonna do one, five, six, four, no problem. That is the power of the numbers. You will get so, so fast. You are a machine. And if you want to know why this is the most important thing, they literally call it the Nashville numbers. It's a thing. Nashville numbers. They have a numbering chart. That's how they chart out all their music. That's how the Nashville session guitarists do it. Uh, the session musicians do it. I've sat in there. I've watched the studio session. Um, Literally, this is how it goes. Um, we were really lucky when we were at Berkeley. We could go to Nashville and uh, we would have like um, amazing lecturers. But one thing they would do is take us to RCA Studio. I think it's RCA Studio A um, was the one that we went to. And we had Dave Cobb. This is the guy who just produced uh, Travel. Like he at the time, he had just produced Traveler for Chris Stapleton. Um, and he had the session group. There was a guy who's singing the demo. Uh, and then he had all these session musicians in here the musical director he listened once through on the song wrote out all the numbers photocopied that and then he passed that photocopy to everyone because it was all numbers they're just like this key of this this is the numbers let's go literally one take one take perfect session musicians just sounded so good you were just like oh my god this is that is what pro looks like that is obviously the highest echelon of like musicians, like music, musicianship. These are like the A-list session players that you get. And um, heaps of them had played on gold records and things like that. But that's what numbers do. So if the best guys, like the best guys and girls that are playing in the music industry are not thinking about letter names, like these are the best session players that you're going to meet. Um, they're thinking about from a number perspective. That's what... Like you don't need to be them to be like, okay, well now that I'm at that level, I should learn it. No, you can learn this thing now. It is simply the smarter way to approach music. 
um, you know, fight me. <laughs> no, nah, don't fight me. I'm weak. Uh, but that is the smartest way to approach music. So that is where the numbers are absolutely amazing. Uh, they're going to increase your communication. I give this example uh, because of my bass player. We love Maddie. You know, Maddie's been in the in the stream a few times. Uh, when he first came to our our band, I was like, "So you need to learn forty five songs." It was like something like forty songs or something like that. I think that was how many I had to tell him. Now, when I first told him to do this. He was like, oh, yeah, no, it should be okay. And then I gave him the actual task. Once he got the task of like, okay, I need to learn these songs. That was a scary task for him because we were about to play a gig. He's like, oh, my God, I don't really know these songs. I don't really know what's going on. I was like, it's okay. Just learn these number system. He had previously dabbled with it. He wasn't, wasn't really into it. We sat down. It took like three sessions with us as a band. He really got a hang of it, like got got really familiar with the numbers, got understood what was going on. And then we went into that that show that we had to play and he did great. You know, he was able to make it through 40 to 50 songs or it was like, yeah, 40 songs ish of songs he had never played. Like he's played them once or twice. Like you play a song once or twice, you kind of like forget it because you've just got so many more that you're learning like out of his mind. And then he came back into this, this, the show and he did great. And then I will play at gigs with him and I'll just have to tell, like he's gotten to the point, he's that good that I'll learn a song. Someone requested the song in, in the crowd or someone asked for us to figure out the song on the spot. And all I have to do is tell him like, you know, oh yeah, one, four, five in the key of G, boom. He's like, yeah, I got it, nails it. And um, it, the only issue is like, understanding how the chord the song flows but he's done so many songs now he's just like he knows how like our playing is anticipated he knows what i'm going to do um the drummer helps him out as well like maddie on the drums two mads pro tip if you are sucky with names make both your members the same name uh it's it's amazing you just always have to remember one but yeah matt on the drums will help cue it so from a professional standpoint for me, numbers have been invaluable. They have lowered the communication. They make it so easy for me to do my job. It allows my bass player to do his job really, really well. Um, and it's just unreal. It's going to make you very, very good, um, especially around whatever community, like group of community or musicians that you are. If you can see things from numbers, you can fit in on anything that they're doing. You don't have to be like, oh, what? What like a uh, chord are you playing? You can just see the bass notes. And once you see the bass notes moving, you're like, oh yeah, cool. That's like a one, four, five, boom, got it. And then you can just jump right in. Cause you know the theory, you don't need to be like, is he playing a major chord or a minor chord? If you see someone is playing a G chord here, like they're starting on a G and then it goes to a C. You can kind of see where the bass notes are moving. You can anticipate, all right, I think it's in a G key. All right. That means if he's playing a C chord or like he's doing a C like this, it must be a major chord. It has to be a major chord because of a G. And you can use the theory to help you nail that. Anyway, I've rambled on too much. We already smashed out all the content that was needed, but welcome to the music theory course, the practical music theory course. This is the end of the uh, beginning part of it. And uh, I will be jumping into more intermediate concepts for everyone who wants to nerd out with me. And we might even... Like, give me your feedback in the uh, in the school community and uh, let me know if there's, like, you would like to go into, like, song analysis. There's only two ways I want to approach it. I was to either give you more advanced stuff or we can do, like, song analysis stuff as well. But I'll make a video about that soon. Anyway, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching the videos. Thank you so much for learning. Um, I will keep trying to put out as much content to help you guys uh, not have to go through what I had to go through in my music career and learn as fast as possible. So... See you guys in the next video and I hope you guys have fun with your new numbers knowledge. All right, stay safe.